What is divine truth? Well, that's the most important question <laughs> of the series, other than the question, what is divine love? Yeah. So I feel what is divine truth is such an important question to answer. So the answer is that divine truth is God's universal truth. Now, that sounds very um, almost religious in its nature, but it's not. The reality is God's universal truth is always logical. It is always scientific in its, in its nature. Mm -hmm. It is always mathematic, mathematical in its nature. It always um, is based on the reality, but not human reality. It's the reality of how God sees everything not the reality of how we see everything, because that's often imaginary rather than reality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Divine truth has a lot of qualities and attributes, and we're going through this series to discuss the qualities and attributes of divine truth. So rather than me mentioning them now as in part of what is divine truth, let's look at a few of the attributes so that we can understand what it means. Firstly, one of the attributes of God's truth is that God's truth is infinite in its nature. And because God knows all the truth, humankind is only ever going to be in this process of discovering truth. And we will keep discovering truth for the rest of our existence and still not find out all the truth. So any book that claims to be the beginning and the end of all of God's truth is totally illogical mm -hmm. right from the beginning. So the Bible itself claiming to be the end of God's truth um, aside from some comments in Revelation, of course, it depends on your interpretation, cannot be logically true because God's truth cannot be contained in a book. In fact, the truth about the human body can't be contained in a book, let alone all of God's universal truth be contained within a book. So we need to understand that, that divine truth is far bigger than most people on this planet and most of humanity imagine. It's even bigger than most people who have passed over into the spirit world imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is a, it's going to be a constantly growing and constantly changing thing because God's universe is constantly growing and the dimensional existences in God's universe are constantly changing. So there will be always this discovery of more and more truth. And this is fantastic because what it does is it gives us, humanity, this beautiful desire to discover more and be involved in the process of discovering more, knowing full well that in the end we're not going to be able to discover everything and that's what's going to keep our life very interesting and enjoyable all the way through the rest of our existence. So we need to stop seeing truth as a finite thing that once we've found it out that's all we need to know because that's not how it's going to be in our discovery of God's truth. And since God is the maker of the universe, God knows all the truth about the universe. We, as a finite being that God has created, have the capacity to discover truth, but we can't expect to know all the truth. Mm -hmm. So God's truth isn't contained within a man-written man book, and it's not contained within any individual, actually. It has to be something that individuals discover. And so what you and I believe is divine truth is God's universal truth, which we have yet to discover fully, and in fact our belief is we have yet to discover a minute part of that truth, given the fact that we're going to have an, uh, an infinite existence, and you and I have been existing only for 2,000 years. So in terms of that period of time, that tells us that we've found out very little of divine <laughs> truth. So when we share divine truth with others, we're just sharing from our personal experience the things we've discovered that we know for certain are God's universal truths that can be proven by fact. They are factual. They're not something that is just imaginary or based upon faith alone, but rather the reality of experience, uh, scientific in nature, mathematical in nature, logical in nature, but we realise that we've discovered very little of it. And this is what we want to share with people. We want to share with people that the discovery of divine truth is going to be an everlasting process. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is understand how to discover divine truth in order to discover more and more of it in a more simple manner. And I have discussed before with people in other questions that the way to discover divine truth is quite simple in that we're better off talking to the creator or finding a method of communication with the creator 
in order to discover truth, then we are trying to experiment in order to discover truth. So what most people do when they try to discover truth is they experiment. What we're trying to do is, is do the greatest experiment, which is this experiment with God, getting closer and closer to God and therefore discovering the truth that God knows. And so by you saying others um, tend to experiment, you mean in the classical sci scientific, scientific method where yeah. people create a hypothesis and test the hypothesis. Using and... some kind of experimental, usually some apparatus, but also based upon what they have had faith in about before. In other words, they might have had, for, for example, if we look at different methods of experimenting, basically what we've done is we've got a body of what seems to be evidence and then some new person comes along and, and then he discovers a new way of discovering evidence. For example, you know, people like Galileo in history discovered new ways of discovering evidence. Mm -hmm. And in, in the an analysis of the universe, he realised that the earth did not, the sun did not rotate around the earth as it appeared, but rather the earth rotated around the sun. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, was a major confrontation to the religious viewpoint of the day. And that means that the religious viewpoint was false and it had to change mm -hmm. because there was a discovery of a new scientific fact. And whenever a new scientific fact is discovered, that is God's truth. And therefore, whatever we believe has to conform to it eventually mm -hmm. at some point in the future. OK, so <coughs> I want to just clarify this point that you keep saying it's scientific in nature. Mm. What you're meaning there is it's scientifically provable. It's, yes. It exists in reality and it's not yes. a matter of conjecture or interpretation. Exactly. So God's truth is always like that. God's truth is always like that. So, uh -huh. and, and, uh, and that doesn't, and just because a human cannot prove it given their current belief system, it doesn't mean it's non provable. Yes. Because, it, you know, for example, once we die and we pass and become a spirit, we have a lot more uh, of the universe available to our to our testing in our testing abilities in our experimentation, yeah. and as a result, a lot of the things we believed when we were on Earth, we we now expand into new beliefs once we pass because we see a whole heap of new things happening through our personal experience. Mm -hmm. So, so this is where p humans have got to be very careful what they do when it comes to discovering truth. What most people do on Earth is they basically don't believe anything they cannot see. And this is a very, um, like I, I feel it's a very foolish thing to do because there are so many things we cannot see. Mm -hmm. We cannot see the basic building blocks of atomic structure, for example, with our human eyes. And yet eventually we get to see them through process, through the discovery of apparatus that we can test these particular things. And it's exactly the same with regard to things about the spirit world. Things that we have personally experienced can be proven. You just need the right apparatus. You just need to know the backgrounds of it all. And, and this is where I feel the majority of people um, don't, don't understand the truth about God's truth. Mm -hmm. Everything is provable. God's always wanting to share everything about the universe with us. It's just whether we're willing to go through the process of being humble to what we don't know. Yeah, and I suppose within that you're also saying, when you're saying things are scientific and mathematical, basically what I glean from that is that everything in God's truth is governed by a set of logical laws. So everything. even if we haven't been able to, even if we don't know it, it's still existing. Exactly. And there is processes, there are processes that we can engage that will involve logic and understanding a certain set of laws which will lead us to truth. And which would lead us to mathematical justification of that particular logic and truth and right. scientific justification of that particular logic and truth. Uh, I suppose because a lot of people would say, well, some things are scientifically proven. People might say it's scientifically proven that you don't have a soul. or the, and that See, I don't, that, that is not the case at all. Yes. And, and, and in fact, like, I, I think nobody, in fact, would probably claim that. No, I was, it's probably a bad example. <laughs> yeah. But there, I, I, I suppose what I'm trying to discuss with you is that um, there are some things on Earth that people believe are, are proven to be false. Yes, I, I don't, see, I don't know about that. Like, right. I feel there are some people who believe those particular things are proven to be false. That's but universally, there are some things that the whole of the earth has now accepted as true 
and very few people accept as false. Yes, I see. Uh, for, for example, the, the, the earth is a sphere, is now an accepted truth in the majority of the planet. There are very few people now associated with any per type of discovery of anything going on with the planet itself that believe that the earth is still flat. Mm -hmm. There are some people that do still. Mm -hmm. There is, in fact, still a flat earth society. But, but it, they are very, very much on the outer when it comes to scientific evidence. Sure. So what happens generally in the discovery of truth, and there's a process of discovery of truth, and that is nobody knows it, mm -hmm. then one person knows it, then a few people know it, and then eventually the whole, uh, the whole scientific community knows it, and then generally that's taught over generations to the whole world. And, and that's generally the process. And once the whole world knows it, then it's very, very hard to shift it if it actually is wrong. You know? so, yeah. so, for example, in terms of religious studies for thousands of years ago, there is this belief that the earth was flat and that was... Or, or more so, so, the Bible and most holy books mention the circle of the earth, but uh, more that the earth... Uh, the, there is this religious viewpoint that they wanted everything to revolve around the earth. So, mm -hmm. And we know that's not the case. The universe doesn't revolve around the earth at all. The earth is just a tiny little speck in the universe. And, and we've discovered that through the discovery of apparatus where we can measure those particular things. And this is the case with all of God's truth. We, we discover more and more ways of finding out the actual truth. And initially there's one person who comes along and says this is the truth and everybody laughs at them. Some, historically they've been put in jail. Historically they've even been murdered mm -hmm. for, do, for, doing the, for, for saying something that the general population doesn't agree with. Eventually the truth will always win. Mm -hmm. Eventually what happens is the whole population eventually accepts those truths no matter what happened historically. So would you say that's another quality of God's truth? Of course. The truth doesn't conform to humankind's ideas or concepts and uh, and in fact humans will have to bring their concepts into harmony with all of God's truth sooner or later. So so yes that's one of the qualities of divine truth. Divine truth does not compromise with regard to human concepts. It doesn't try to conform itself to the ideas and belief systems of humanity. Mm -hmm. In fact it's quite opposite of that. God is never going to conform the universe to the human's concept of it we need to discover it. Now, most scientists understand that. Most scientists who are looking at the universe have a good understanding of this, un this basic principle that we need to go out and discover what's there. Mm -hmm. And most religious people don't have a good concept of that. Most religious people have a very, very fixed idea about what is in the universe, and they are very opposed, due to their religious belief systems, to discovering new scientific facts. And often it has been religion that has opposed the discovery of God's truth, ironically. Yes. So there is religion stating to the world that it is the, you know, the, 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 they are the people who know everything about God's truth. And yet they have been the very people who have been opposed to the discovery of new scientific truth, which is God's truth. Mm -hmm. So I find that quite ironic in some ways, that often it's religion that has actually uh, been against the discovery of divine truth, God's mm. truth. And, and I find it interesting that when I talk about God's truth, most scientific people have a problem because they, most of them believe, you know, do not believe in a God, generally. And yet, ironically, I have exactly the same philosophy that they have in terms of the discovery of truth. Yes. With one exception, and that is, I believe there is a creator who knows all truth. And, and also, not only believe, I know for certain mm. through my personal interaction with that creator. And you also mentioned earlier that you have a different process in experimenting in of that you, you would go directly to God. To not a, yes, and then confirm those particular things through my personal experience, of course. So, so like, like a scientist would with regard to the discovery of you know, what you would call physical facts, I do the same with all facts, spiritual, physical, love, emotional, everything, all kinds of facts. They, they are all part of God's truth. Mm. There are laws that govern the flow of emotion, for example, between one person and another. There's actual physically, physical laws that govern those particular things. They're God's truths. There's physical laws that govern the physical universe. There's physical laws that, dis that govern what we refer to as the spirit world, which is really just other dimensional existences. There's mathematics that defines them, physical laws that govern them. 
There's the physical laws that govern the unification of the soul. The physical process of two halves of the soul coming together is all governed by universal law, scientific in nature, logical and mathematical in its basis. All of these things have, have the underlying premise that God knows reality and in the end all we're going to do is discover that reality sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Now if we spend all of our time discovering that reality by experimentation without God, well that's fine. Eventually we'll arrive at some truth. But I'm suggesting that if you do it with God, you'll arrive at the truth much more rapidly and much greater truths you'll arrive at much more rapidly as well. So, but that's the only difference between myself and a person who, who has a scientific background. Mm. Mm. And finally, would you say that all of divine truth is actually loving? Always. All divine truth, all of God's universe has been created around loving principles. So truth is always loving. God's truth is always loving. A lot of people on earth don't believe that, of course. And that's one difference between personal truth and divine truth. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but God's truth is always loving. It's always based on facts. It's always based on logic. But it's always got in, entwined with it this emotion of love that, that, that flows throughout every single law. It, and in fact, once you understand love, you understand the laws far better as to why they've been created, how they work. And in terms of the discovery of new laws, it's much easier to discover new laws once you understand that all of the laws are based around love. Love. Yeah. Mm. Great. Thank you. Yeah.